Veterans Helping Veterans is our mission because we are Warfighter Made. Your legs aren't gonna grow back. Your arms aren't gonna grow back. You have the power to change your outcome. And I choose to be happy and positive because that's what I want to surround myself with. Having the opportunity to come here and make things safe for a rider to be able to unload a dirt bike and get to back to doing what they love to do. All these will come off too. So there's a tent. Oh, because you want to hang it over here. Yeah, we're gonna hang the whole brake caliper off. You know, because like our KIA, they gave up their tomorrows for our todays. But our wounded gave up their normal sort of life so that others may be free. I just want them to get that sort of freedom back too. The only one thing I ever wanted to be was in the military. I wanted to be just like my dad. He was in the Army and he served during Vietnam. He uh, received a Bronze Star for doing some pretty crazy stuff. I expected to grow up prior to my country serving. I thought that that would make me a better man, I guess. So graduate boot camp, then I went to SOI, School of Infantry. Graduate from SOI and then I get stationed at 3-5, 3rd Battalion, 5th Marines. Yeah, I mean, training is hard. And I think a lot of people join the Marine Corps under misconceptions that it's like Call of Duty. And then they come to find out that packs actually weigh something and rifles actually weigh something. There is no pause button, there is no reset button. If somebody dies, they're dead. That's when it becomes real and like, oh, I'm becoming a man because this is not a boy's job, this is a man's job. My first uh, deployment was called a MU. So you, where you go on a ship and you float around. So Okinawa, Australia, went to Thailand, Philippines, and you train with other military and you, you trade tactics. My MOS uh, in the Marine Corps was 0311, which is an infantry rifleman. In Afghanistan, I decided that I wanted to volunteer for point. So meaning I was responsible for my left, right, and forward contact. Also meaning that I would probably be the first to be engaged along with my engineer that was in front sweeping the way. When we got to Afghanistan, it was uh, September of 2010. Emotions were very like, whoa, you know, like we're going to war. Um, it was very real, very quick. Our mission, greet the local people, make friends, show them that we're here to help them, engage the enemy if the enemy presented themselves and push them out and clear the district, you know, take it back. It was a Taliban stronghold. Our gunnery sergeant, she's glass for breakfast, you know what I mean? Like, so he tells me that, hey, creator, they have you on on point, and I was like, yes, Gunny. And then he just said, he said, uh, hey, you take care of little brother, they're gunning for you guys. You know, like I'd never hear this man speak to anyone really like that. For him to show that concern kind of worried me. So what we ended up doing was hitting an IED belt around a compound of interest that was an IED making factory. I just remember kind of like stepping and like Sammy Sosa hit me with a ba baseball bat, like, Boom, to my stomach, you know? And I remember going up in the air and then hitting the ground and then like my Kevlar bouncing up and see my legs like chewed up. I'm gonna die in this country. I was disoriented. Everything was in a fog of war kind of mentality. Everything was slow-mo. My boys were giving me kisses on the head and making signs of the cross and, you know, telling me like, you're gonna go home to your little girl and all these things. I didn't hear any of that really. And then I kept screaming to God, you know, just like, if you're gonna take me, take me now. But if you're gonna keep me here, can you please numb me up, just please. And so, in medical terminology, I went into shock. In my faith, I, he, he did what I asked, he, he numbed me up. So they were gonna fly both my parents to Germany to basically receive my body at that point. My stubborn ass, the faith of God, pulls through. My nurse, Ruth Rohde, who we stay in contact to this day, I told her not to cry because I would do it again in service to my country. But also I was cracking jokes that it was okay that I lost this arm because then I wouldn't have to salute officers anymore. And at that point, she knew it was gonna be okay because I was already cracking jokes and worrying about others instead of myself. I've been blessed with a lot of support from the community, from this nation. And I met my wife and she's got the same attitude and she's a driven person. I wouldn't have tracked that with the negative attitude or that bad road I was heading down. So I just choose to be positive, you know. I speak at schools, I speak at churches, I speak to music programs. They're just really passionate about helping people now because I think that's just the path that God chose for me. 
Warfighter fits in that mission. It's like one of those things that I believe like I got blessed in the fact that I'm very social. I love attention. And when you see a guy in the corner who just hates the world and doesn't like being social, and then they smile. They go back to their families a little happier. Wives are calling Rob saying, what'd you do to my husband? He's smiling now. That's what I get a kick out of. If we can make someone stay by just giving them a hug, or given a hard time in a marine way that kind of like lets a man up a little bit and changes his perspective on it, then it's good.